Everybody, thanks for watching. Now, a lot of people struggle to understand, you know, oppression, exactly what people are going through in the black community. You know, we talk about oppression and what has taken place and about black history or what have you, but a lot of people struggle to really understand this oppression, uh, this system that we are in. It's one of the reasons why you have so many uh, Europeans and people looking at the African-American community and they're looking at the situation and what they see and what they say is, it seems as if this is African-Americans doing things to themselves. It's not as if it's a system in place or, you know, the white man who is doing this to the black community. It's black people imposing things onto themselves and black people destroying each other or what have you. Now, the thing is, when you don't understand how oppression works, even most black people don't understand how oppression works. We suffer from the effects of it. But a lot of people don't really understand because if we understood, then we wouldn't be falling victim to it, you know, for so many years now. So this is a subtle thing. You know, oppression is a mindset. In order for you to get a people to destroy themselves, seemingly, you have to change their mindset. And this is exactly what has happened. The mindset has been changed. We have been tricked into a false sense of identity, thinking that things are something that uh, things are something that we could benefit from, that this system is something that, you know, is going to benefit us and it has never benefited us yet. We have remained in this system. And the thing is, when you go to oppress a people, if you don't have their mind, if you don't change their mind, if you don't have a mindset of these people to actually act out what you want to take place, then it's not going to happen. Now, I've talked about this before, and we got to understand, you know, they can manipulate the black community by remote control. They put things in the community that's going to stimulate us a certain way and cause us to act a certain way. And again, when there is poverty, there's going to be crime, no matter what color you are, what race, where you live at in the world, if there is poverty, and there, if there's not help, if it's not hope, if it's not anybody there to look out for the people, then it's going to be crime. So now one of the main reasons how it's going to be crime in a black community, when you think about the black community, where is it? The inner cities. They always say the inner city youth, inner city gangs, inner city, inner city. Why the inner city? Because they understood one. The only way you're going to be able to survive as a people, the only way any people can survive it's with natural resources, plain and simple. So to survive as a people, you're going to need land, fertile land. You're going to need plants. You're going to need animals. And you're going to need enough natural resources to sustain them as well. So if you put a group of people, if you push people to the inner city where there is no fertile land, not just that, where people lack the knowledge to understand about farming in the first place because we basically lost that. And we got encompassed in this whole, you know, so-called white man's world and, you know, and moving into the cities and understanding how things work and getting jobs and industry and what have you. A lot of people lost touch with understanding how to form. And if you're not from the South, typically most people don't understand how the system works. So the South, we know, has the majority of farms. And when you go outside the inner cities, you go outside to the cities, those fertile lands are already owned by people. You can't leave the inner city and just go walk around and find some land and start, you know, planting some seeds. That land most likely is owned by a person and that person is probably white. So when you push people into an inner city, there is no natural resources for them to sustain themselves. They don't understand about farming in the first place. Then there's going to be crime. And they understood that. So you can't just go and grow food and you might have one or two people who have you know, land in their backyard where, you know, they can, they understood how to plant and grow fruits and vegetables or what have you, but those are small cases. Certain people in certain places that understand this. And I remember growing up, we had a, a peach tree in our backyard. I know we had another neighbor that had a pear tree, but it certainly wasn't enough fruit to, to feed the entire neighborhood. So you had this problem. And this is one of the reasons why we was pushed into the inner city. So now, you're forced to, you know, fend for yourself and figure out how to work and how to hustle and to make money and to do what you got to do, you know, to feed your family. So this is already an environment that's going to produce poverty and crime. And we're all in it. 
we were all in it and everybody struggling to get out of it and to understand what's going on. That's one of the main things uh, was the frustration in the black community because when you don't have, you get frustrated. You know, when people don't have money, when, they, when they're looking at their brothers and sisters starving and their mom and everything like that, you get frustrated and you want to go do something. You get angry and you go out and you do you know, careless things. So this is the environment you know, that we were forced to live in. Now we can keep talking about the past and about everything they have done to us and are doing to us, but we need to understand the facts and what is in front of our face. It's not going to stop. It's not. And this is what I was talking about before. You need to understand that it's not going to stop because our mindset is still the same. If we don't change our mindset, then nothing is going to change. Plain and simple. And, you know, so many people act now and do things and don't even understand why they do them. Don't even understand if that's really what they want or if it's really going to result in something positive or, or, or some kind of change. So you get so many people going out there, as I said, marching and marching used to work. It was something that really united people. But black people was more united back in the 60s. Not so much now. If that was the case, then we would all be out there. If it was like the 60s and the 70s, then our problems would have been solved because black people were more powerful. Then we were more strong, more united as a people. And when something went down, we didn't ask any questions. Everybody rallied and, you know, took charge. You can't get a bunch of black people to, you know, not take the bus today. It's just not going to happen. I got to be to work. I got to do this. I got to pick up my kids from daycare. It's not going to happen. You can't get a bunch of black people to walk off the job. I got to pay bills, got to pay rent. It's not going to happen. They turned us into a me, me, me society, a me, 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 you know, civilization of people. And everything is about me. And people don't think about the overall picture because now, you know, we have these identities. Everybody has the identity of who they want to be and who they're trying to be and who they think they are. And the identity that we claim as being, you know, black people, we don't really act like you know we care about their identity people seem to care more about the identity that they chose for themselves you know what they think they want to be and who they think they are and when you pay attention to these identities that people created most of them you know they need this system to to exist to go on and that's something that people struggle with deep down you want to be a superstar an entertainer or what have you you want this job you want to do that then you need this system you don't really want this system to go. And that's one of the things that, you know, why people struggle with in America. You know, they understand the oppression of the government. They understand what's going on. Some people try to act like they don't and they deal with the guilt and they want to act like it's just black people doing things to themselves. But they understand that, hey, something is not right. You know, this system is not treating black people fairly. They get that. And you get some people who do who do march, who do protest. And, you know, deep down inside and most of the people, they understand that if this system falls, if the government system falls, then what? See, they have, you know, pushed white people in America, you know, to a point. You have white people who have been taken care of very well by the system, treated really good by the system, hundreds of years. And occasionally something goes wrong and they bitch and complain, but really, they don't want to get rid of the system because the system has taken good care of them. So they got to think about that. Hmm, how far am I willing to go? Because if this system goes, then what? We know that we're white and under this white system, we're being, we're being treated good. What happens is if the system change? We're certainly not thinking about, you know, turning the system over to African Americans. Then what? What will they do? So they got to think about that. You got to understand that this mindset exists and people feel this way. And deep down, there's only a certain point that they're willing to go to. So really, if we get deep into it, the feelings of most of these white people is going to be, well, we don't want the system to go anywhere. We just want the system to change. We still want these white people in power, but we want them to stop, you know, treating black people unfairly. We want them to stop, you know, doing things, you know, killing it. You know, all of the racism and, you know, the, the unfair treatment, and wages and everything like that. People want to see everybody treated equally, but that's not going to happen as long as this system exists. So a lot of people talk about, you know, this is the new slavery. The whole system 
is designed around us being slaves. And these people are correct. When you look at the system and the way things are, it is designed for us to be the new slaves, followers. And that's exactly how the society is basically built, for us to be followers. Everything we do is in following something that we see. We're following the television. We're following the trends. We are followers. The thing is, what we are following is not leading to us growing economically at all. This lead into our downfall. So we are a system of followers and everybody talk about being unique and their own person and being real and 100. Everybody is following something. You are a follower of something. Plain and simple. So when we look at you know our economic situation, it's, it's horrible. It's crazy. And it's, it's due to a lack of real leaders, as I said before. And we don't have people coming forward with new ideas specifically for black people to help us grow economically. And then when when we do see them, you know, uh, it's something to it. It's something wrong with it or it's not really given to us by a black person. We, we can see the flaws in a system that's being pushed, how it's going to hinder us down the line. So a lot of people don't follow, you know, such things for the most part. We go with what we, you know, we accept what we are given in a black community. Whatever they give us, is, we have no choice but to take it. But as far as growing economically, there is nobody coming to the inner cities pushing new economic plans that's really going to take the inner city, you know, black community from the state that is in to a different level. It's not happening, you know, because the mindset is, is not there, you know, from the people. It's going to take the people to do such a thing. It's going to take the people coming together and figure, figuring out something. We're not getting help from these rich black folks coming back to the inner cities trying to take it to a different level. We're not seeing that. And we're so caught up in following that we don't realize that, damn, the people who could take us to this next level that can help the black community are not doing so. Yet we see them pushing for other things and we follow along with that and what they pushing and, and don't realize, well, wait a minute, you know, where where is the the new plan for the black community so we're looking at what's going on in houston and everybody is jumping on instagram and you got celebrities speaking out about you know donating to the red cross for houston or what have you help houston 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 and don't get me wrong yeah people definitely need help but where were the black people where were the black celebrities you know last week a couple weeks ago you know coming up with a plan to help the inner cities to help the black community to do something big to take the black community to the next level. We don't see that. We see them pushing and promoting something that's not going to benefit black people. And now when you look at what's going on in Houston, you got a lot of people coming out saying that the black people, they're not getting no help. That, you know, the rescue boats are passing black people by laughing at them, which is sick. I hope those stories ain't true, but I'm starting to see more and more people talking about the same thing. So the Red Cross is known, they're known for not putting the money where it's supposed to go. Plain and simple. We see what happened with Haiti. We see what happened with Katrina. You have a lot of people still suffering from the effects of those events and nothing is being done. They are very skilled at understanding how we're going to move and how we're going to act. And again, when people say that they're conscious and woke and they you know, escape the matrix and all this and that, these are people who can see it now. You can look back and see it, and it's a joke. And what's going on in Houston is not a joke, but I'm looking at the situation and I know exactly what it is. We've seen it before. It's a distraction from many different things. Some things that was talked about, it's not going to be talked about no more because of Houston. Another distraction. And we don't want to accept the fact that, you know, this could be something other than, you know, a natural disaster. You know, we look at it as that what they tell us in the media, and it's a distraction. So you got people talking about that, people talking about uh, Joe Osmond, what happened with his church and everything. And um, it's distracting us from so many different things that's happening. And we, we're not on the ground there in the black community. So we don't know exactly what's taking place. So we can only rely on the reports that we're getting from the black community and people saying that they fishing themselves out of the, uh, the flooding zones and they taking themselves out of the zones and saving themselves and trying to save other people and it's not much help coming there so again we 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 fall for the same shit you know once again and you know lately don't get me wrong we have been more uh vigilant about 
these type types of events and false flags or what have you. But, you know, every once in a while, you know, things slip by us and questions about these things are not asked and people don't take these things in the situations that happen after they happen and take it back to their own community and say, well, wait a minute, you know, all this stuff got done. Millions of dollars got raised for this issue, for this here. How come we can't come together as a black community, each community and say, well, we have these problems. We're tired of the violence. We're tired of the drugs. We want to fix this community. We're all coming together. Let's do something. You don't see that happening. Because too many people would rather be seen as a baller, as a person that's cool, as a person that's getting money. Too many people would rather be seen as that identity they created for themselves rather than to say my community is not doing good, is in bad shape. We need to come together and do something. When you get those few black people that speak out, that come out and start to do something, the mindset kicks in. Oh, he's just trying to get some money. He's a scam artist. It's a scam, you know, because we're not used to seeing black people in those positions. As soon as a black people, a black person start getting big and start doing big things, you know, he, he is subject to scrutiny, even from his own peers, his own people who he's trying to help. And that's what it is. And it just happens in so many different occasions. And we see, I talked about this before, but Dr. Omar, who people was jumping on him about the school and he just, he didn't get the money for the school. And there is a reason for that. It's a lack of support, one, from the black community. But two, also, the reason why I spoke about this before, there is a system in place to hinder that. And you don't understand because you can't jump into the computer system and understand how stuff works. You know, I gave my example because I'm suffering from the same thing. And I'm pretty sure others are as well who's trying to do something positive for the black community. You don't know that when that person tried to, you know, make that payment or send that money, that it was some kind of error or malfunction. So come a problem on a side because, you know, for some reason, you know, they can tell who's black and who's doing what. They understand, well, and this zip code is black people, maybe, you know, I can mess with their computer system or do something to that link or, you know, disturb the situation in some way. And this is what we're seeing. This is what I've talked about because I see it happening. Now, it's not over ourselves. It's just in America. So, you know, a lot of people jumped on uh, me when I, when I put it out about the uh, cells for Saturn, Satan 6, saying, oh, you just, you just worried about money. It's not that. It's the cells in America specifically. It sold over a thousand in Europe. I just put out part four of um, Mystery School. 37 people in America bought it in America. Only 37. 700 in Europe right now. But only 37 people in America bought it. I have almost 400 followers on Instagram that see the post. Well, not all of them, apparently. But only 37 people bought. Over 35,000 subscribers on uh YouTube, 37 people. And this is not me blaming the people. It's me saying, wait a minute, these people are not seeing what's being put out. And again, I get emails and messages from people saying, well, the link don't work. It's malware. It's viruses. It's this. It's that. It's a problem, problem, problem. You know, do the math. I sold over a thousand Saturn Satan, 700 uh, part four of Mystery School. You know, it's about 15 bucks each. So do the math. It's not about the money. It's about, I understand America is where this information needs to go. And my people, black people, is, you people need this information. This is where it's needed the most. So, of course, you know, I want to make sure that people are getting it because it's getting information. If you're seeing it, you understand what I'm talking about. And also because I get a lot of emails and people who, who complain as if, you know, it's something on my part that I'm doing something wrong. You know, you know why it's not working? What's going on? What's going on? You know, and it's not me. So it's things like this is what I'm talking about that's hindering uh, the situation and the progress of change in a black community because there are things in place. So as I said before, I try to put videos out and, and uh, you know, I get a lot of views on the YouTube videos. So hopefully people will see that and support that way because I have to pay Instagram and Facebook for, you know, to um, sponsor the ads to, you know, put them on the timeline so people can see, you know, uh, what I'm putting out. And then you don't even, I don't even know if people are actually seeing it. I don't even know if, you know, what I'm paying for is actually being done. You can only, you know, 
hope because I can't see everybody's timeline and see if they're seeing the ad or what have you. So, you know, these are things that you got to think about. You know, it's a lot of a lot of people on social media that is, you know, pushing for change and trying to help black people. And of course, the powers that be understand that and they are not going to really allow us. I mean, think about it. Are they really going to allow that to happen? You know, if a person did amass, you know, millions of followers and really start putting something together to, you know, have change, they hinder everything that we do. So is it is it going to happen? We don't know. You don't know. But, you know, you can only surround yourselves by um, things to protect you in, in, in so many different ways. But, you know, at the end of the day, you don't really know what's going to happen. You can only do what you hope will work. And, you know, I'm on a mission right now to really get my program off the ground, to get this whole system out and working. This is something that's going to cost well over a million dollars. And I'm prepared to put, you know, at least, you know, 700,000 of my own money uh, into the project over time. And this is something, as I said, that will get done because it's a system that we're going to need. It's a social media site that we're really going to need because I'm telling you, this shit is not going to last. They're not going to allow us to keep doing this. And I, I, as I said before, I seen it with YouTube and I knew they was not going to let people just keep putting out the truth without in some way hindering it. So they suckered people in and now people have to decide whether to put out the truth, put out facts and actual research or to get paid. This is something that we cannot allow. The only weapon we have right now in the black community as black people is our voice to be able to at least convey what's going on. And they're taking steps to really grasp hold of the Internet. So we only have a small window to get things in place. We're going to miss it. We've missed so many things to where, you know, it's cut off now. We can't get in and change and, you know, we can't jump in and own our, you know, on TV networks now. And it's really hard to try to own your own network. You see what they're doing to Bill Cosby. A lot of people will tell you, well, they, they're doing this to Bill Cosby because, because he tried to buy NBC. It's tough. We missed that bus. We missed that bus. The radio station. You might can get a little local radio station, national radio station. I mean, if you jump on one and be a host or what have you, you're not going to own it. We missed that bus as well. It's almost impossible to actually own these things now. Try to open up a newspaper national. You know what I'm saying? We missed those buses of media. It's not going to happen. This is it. And if we miss this bus, which is this is the future. This is it. It's the digital age. If we miss this bus and don't get things in place that's going to help us, that's going to take us forward into the next 20, 30, 100 years from now and help us grow as black people, that's game. It's game. Am I the only person who can see this? I'm not. Believe it or not, there's other people as well that, that understand this. And we got to do something because I personally understand how serious this is. Look at how social media controls us. Look at what's going on. So what I talked about in the last video about how they put in, you know, things in, you know, Facebook and Instagram and, and using these algorithms. Same thing with uh, YouTube. You know, when you search a video, you get recommend uh, recommendations for other videos based upon what you've been watching. But they understand what people are into and they can use it not just to, you know, push sales and to get the product to a person who might be looking for. It, but as I pointed out, they can use it in other ways as well. So we have to at some point, if it's not me, somebody, somebody that's real, that's genuine, that's going to try to help black people like myself and, and others needs to do something to to put something in place before it's too late. That's going to benefit black people as far as this Internet system. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm trying to do. And it's something that, you know, I hope I, you know, can complete eventually. And, um, you know, so the whole point, as I said before, of the GoFundMe was to help speed things up and to, uh, you know, help get things, you know, to a certain point of completion where, you know, testing can be done and I can really try to work out this system and any problems that I might, you know, foresee and the legal issues that I'm going to have, which is going to be the major part about this, you know, the system is going to be because there's a lot of legal things I need to surround it by, you know, and this country and in America to get this thing to work to where it can't be um, really uh, messed with. And right now, because the way the Internet is set up to where, you know, it's, it's free, it's public, you know, these legal things are possible.
that can't be hindered. Nobody can mess with them at this specific time because, you know, they haven't done anything yet to change it, but they're working on it. They're trying to get control of the Internet so much to regulate it even more. So, again, when you sign yourself up for these social media sites that's put here for a reason, these people are smart. They understand what they're doing. It's put out there for a reason to attract everybody in it, to make it so popular that everybody comes to it. So when an alternative comes up, nobody's even thinking about it. We see what happened in MySpace. And don't get me wrong, you still got millions of people on MySpace, but it ain't like Facebook. You see what happens. A lot of people jumped on that Facebook bandwagon and now they're looking at MySpace as a joke. And, you know, it's always about the new thing. And, and Facebook is designed to keep giving us the new thing. But it's not for us. And we got to understand that it's against us and it's a part of this whole system. Now, so many people talk about, you know, practicing group economics. And a lot of people don't even understand what group economics is and where to go to participate. And that's, you know, my point. We don't have a social media site. We don't have somewhere to go where people can find out more about these group economic, uh, you know, opportunities and how to participate and how it's going to benefit them. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring that to people, because you can be on social media and um, you can have, you know, 40, 50 people from your community on social media as well. And you guys are not even friends. You don't even really know each other, but you have the same concerns about the community and trying to, you know, fix the community. So if it's something in place to bring you guys together, one, and to get you guys to understand the type of resources available for you and your community and what you can do to get these resources and how to allocate it to you and your family and the community to bring it out of the situation that it's in, then this is something that we need. This is something that we got to have. And this is something that has to be controlled by the people. And where it's, it's not going to be something where we got to go to, you know, the system or the white man to get done. It's something that we can do ourselves and have it back up with the legal protection that's going to benefit us to where no matter what we do, there's no more we can lose as long as we put money into the situation and helping the situation. We live in communities, black communities, where the, we don't even really own the homes. The homes aren't even really owned by black people in a lot of cases. So that's one of the things we got to do. One, we got to get the space. We got to get the properties. We got to own the land and own the resources in there. We got to kick these people out of the community. It's not bringing money back into the community. It's the, pl the blueprint is out there. The plan is already in place. We just got to implement it and make it work. So this is the problem with the churches in the black community. You have so many churches in the black community where you have the church who has access to the people physically. Forget social media, forget going online. These preachers and pastors and deacons and reverends or what have you have access to the people themselves where they can come into the church and they can see them physically and actually engage in conversation with them about the community. But it's not being done. In a lot of cases, you have some of these churches that's lucky enough to have in this congregation doctors, lawyers, businessmen, accountants, nurses, and what have you, people who understand, who are a vital part of civilization, big part. But you have this preacher in there giving them delusional stories, talking to them about, you know, this fictional character that's supposed to make everything better. Meanwhile, outside of the church, nothing is getting better and has been that way since you've been a kid, decade after decade. Nothing is, is getting fixed. The only thing that the church does for the community is once in a while, you know, give out canned goods, boxes of food, old food that don't nobody really want to eat. But, you know, homeless people who are super starving, canned food, drive or what have you. And you have this church, this preacher tell you a bunch of bullshit lies about this fake Jesus who ain't never helped us. That's all we get. They tell you don't go gamble. Gambling is wrong. But they have church bingo and they have uh, church uh, lotteries and church raffles or what have you. It's crazy. But the church is where we can find the leaders. Talk about a lack of leadership in the black community. It's right there in the church. Right there. But they're so caught up with this religion and they don't really understand, one, that the religion is there to keep the black community the way that it is. Because while everybody's talking about all the problems and this and that, they get up and go in the church and on Sunday and read a book that says in Matthew, ask and you shall receive. Anything you ask for in prayer shall be given to you. And all their problems are still there when they leave that church and they come back on Sunday with the same problems or even worse problems. 
Everybody's praying to this fictional sky daddy to fix things and it's not getting fixed, but they still come back to the church. The community don't get fixed. And you have this person in a position to do things to fix the community, but he doesn't speak about economics. He speaks about the church, the church. He has that 501c3 from the government, tax exempt status, so he can preach about the church, about a book that has never helped us, about a God that's not helping us. And this is the problem. But the church having access to the people and having the people's ear and not just that, uniting black people. This is one of the instances where you see black people actually come together and act civilized, you know, besides the stupid ass Holy Ghost shit they be doing. But you have a place where people can come together in peace and really talk and engage in conversation and try to get things fixed. But if you have people thinking that faith, you know, in action, it's actually going to do something to fix their community. I mean, it's crazy. It's delusional. And as I said, mindset is a mindset that has to be changed to get people to understand reality. The only way it's going to change is if we change it. Perfect place to begin to rebuild the black community and to change things. But we can't use it for you know what it should be used for. We can't use it to really, truly benefit us as a community. So, you know, this is a problem. And this is one of the reasons why we have to really get on the ball and, and really start moving and doing things outside of these systems. Because you have the church that has so much power that's in place. So not only do you got to compete with the system itself, you have to compete with the mindset of these religious people and these churches. That's big on the corner that everybody go to, that everybody is influenced by. You got to compete with that as well. And... The, the crazy thing about it is the mindset of people, because, again, these people go to church and they get up early and they get dressed and they really base their schedule off of church and the service. But then they don't fucking live by what the Bible says is right before God or what their church says is right before God. They don't. They go in there and fraud and act like they somebody who they're not. And when they get outside the church, you know, it's back to the real world. And it's back to pretending and hoping and, you know, praying and wishing and nothing gets done. It's a waste of time. But it's something that we got to look at that model and say we need places like this. Every community should have a community center. Plain and simple. Forget the church. The church ain't going to do nothing. As long as these people have this mindset of religion, it's just it's going to be the way that it is. But that's not to say that for the sake of you know economics and for making the community better, that we can't go and try to talk to these preachers and get them to do things economically, to change things, to do little different things that's not going to really you know you know and you know inflict on people's religion, but help build the community. But then again, it goes back to that five hundred one c three that says that the state basically owns that church, and if you start doing something like that, the state can stop it. And that's something to think about as well. But the model was still there as far as having a community center to get people together to, to understand how to do this. And it's something that we need to do on our own. It's how you separate. Me personally, my stance on all this stuff, as I talked about before, seeing all this stuff that's going on in the marching and protesting, get away from it. Let these racist people go out there and march and say whatever they want to say and protest. Don't, don't deal with it. Just let it go. The only people we should see on the news protest, you should have a KKK on one side and nobody else but the news media. You shouldn't have people out there screaming back at the KKK. They look stupid and you look stupid screaming at them. What you there for? What like your presence is not going to get them to change hundreds of years of ideology about black people. They're not going to all of a sudden change. All you're going to do, you're there to get into an argument. It's not going to help the situation. They're going to flip it to make you look stupid. It's not worth it. You should have people there screaming. That's it. The KKK. Nobody else. But then you got to understand, you know, people got situations. People got problems. People need to feed their family so they can pay black people to go ahead and argue. I'm going to pay you money to pay, you know, for you to go up there and argue with these KKK dudes. This is the problem. And as long as we can be bought, our situation will never change. As long as they can buy us and as long as they can buy us 
to a point where we don't have a situation to rectify that, to, to fix if somebody is bought. We're going to continue to lose. We don't have nothing to combat that. What do we have? You have people who are not going to come out and expose these people as being bought off. We don't have a situation to combat that. So, you know, as I said, this is this is a, an uphill battle and we so far behind. Like y'all don't really understand the body of work it's going to take to fix this situation. And we haven't even begun yet. You know, so I, I do a lot of meditation. You know, I spend a lot of time really trying to relax and calm down and, you know, be somewhere soothing because, you know, I look at things differently and I understand, you know, the difficult tasks we have ahead and I can I can kind of see what's coming and what they're trying to do. And to me, it's like, yo, we need to wake up fast. So, you know, I, it's, it's tough for me. I can't I can't be on social media and go up and down the timeline and see the shit that I'm seeing. You know, it's like a train is coming and, you know, people on the tracks dancing. They don't like they act like they don't see the damn train. People on the tracks worried about what Nicki Minaj is doing or what some celebrity is doing and what's coming on TV. You know, when the next episode of Power or Game of Thrones or some shit is coming on, you know, and this train is barreling down on us. So I can't get with that. I can't get with it. I just can't because I'm looking at this stuff and I'm like, well, it's, it's what? What is this? Like, do, do people not understand what's going on? It's crazy. And this is why I say a mindset. It's crazy how, you know, you can turn on the TV and see innocent black person killed in the street, you know, uh, KKK, you know, rallies and protests, of white supremacy or what have you. And people just ignore all that to go, you know, look at some music videos to talk about, you know, hip hop and music that's talking about killing each other and, you know, destroying the black community. What is that? That is a mindset. That is a mindset, and this is what we have, and what we stuck with, and what we got to deal with. And it's frustrating to anybody who can see what's going on and what they're doing. I mean, these people is showing you that they don't give a shit. That this is what they think of you. You you are nothing. We could just kill you on TV, and there's nothing you can do about it. I don't care how much you march. We're gonna keep killing you. You are worthless. You are nothing. And y'all want to go dance to some music. I want to go dance about this and talk about that and watch this and promote promote that. It's fucking frustrating when you see it. You know, it's frustrating. And, you know, everybody not as lucky as me. Everybody's not as, you know, I don't like to say blessed, you know, as, as me. But, you know, I have the opportunity to, to, go, to get up and go. You know, I can just leave. I can live anywhere I want to live in, in the world. It doesn't matter. Everybody can't do that. But I have to be able to do it because I can't sit in one place too long and, and deal, you know, I have to unfortunately deal with America right now, but I'm almost can finish the process of being completely done with America, except for as, you know, business wise, that's it. As far as a citizen, it's almost done and over with for me. So, you know, my process will be done, you know, hopefully by the end of this year or by next year to where I'm no longer an American citizen. So that's already in the works. But, you know, I can't, I can't do it. I just can't, I can't get with it. So, no, I haven't seen Power. I haven't seen one episode of Power. I haven't seen one episode of any of these stupid shows that a lot of people watch. I can't bang with this hip-hop stuff. I can't really get with it. But, you know, it's frustrating to see it and to see that this is what people are worried about at a time like this. Did, did, did you not see what's on the news? Did you not see that these people are telling you at every moment that you turn, this is what they can do to you. It's nothing you can do. We don't care about you. And to have people actually protest against you for saying, don't kill me. I mean, that shit don't make you want to don't make you want to get your shit together. I mean, what will? So, again, when I say a mindset, if we don't change our mindset, it's, nothing is going to happen for us. Nothing is going to be fixed, because if you've got that kind of mindset, I mean, they already won. So, yeah, what I think, you know, black people should do is just fall back. You know, fall back and change, you know, really start thinking about what you consider priority and what you really hold, you know, true, true to you know, what, what you really think is important. You know, what is it? You know, what is it? Is it just, you know, working and, you know, trying to make some money and feed your family? Do you have a dream or a goal you're trying to, you know, aspire to? Like, what is it that you want? And think about what is it really? You know, what is that really going to do for you and do for, you know, black people? And again, 
And that's the problem. <laughs> because, you know, when you have your goals and dreams, it's about me. And as I always say before, you know, we've been conditioned, you know, to feel like, you know, shitting on other black people is just cool. I got this, you don't have that. I got this and you don't. I don't want what everybody else got. I don't want people to have what I have. You know, we've been conditioned to have this kind of mindset, even though we really don't got shit. And people just want what um, what they know other people can't afford or can't get or what have you. It's just like a cool thing that, you know, we have this mindset and it's stupid. It's retarded. And as long as we had this mindset of me, 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 you know, it's just stuff is not going to work. So, again, that's a mindset. That's something that's put in place for us to feel this way. And it's something that completely goes against a community, what a community stands for. So if you're trying to shit on your next door neighbor or the person who's around the corner from you or what have you, you're trying to be better than them or be balling or what have you. And, you know, people compete with their own brothers and sisters and friends or what have you for, for material possessions. And it's like, why wouldn't you want somebody who you say you love to, to be doing better than you? And this is the mindset. If you want a person, if you have friends in your circle who don't want to see you doing better than them, they need to get out your circle because I want everybody in my life who I love and who I associate with to be doing better than me. Plain and simple. Uh, of course I do. Why wouldn't you want that? To have more money, to be more successful, that's good. It gives you something to, to work towards, you know, to work harder for. And if you have a circle like that, then you're gonna be better yourself, especially if these people actually love you. That means you can never fall. You're good. You're surrounded by people that can that got more than you, that can lift you up with no problem. And some people surround themselves with less, you know, you know, it's, it's just a crazy mindset to have. And we don't we're not realizing that that's our mindset because, you know, it's all about being cool and cool has basically destroyed the black community. And it's all about following the trends. And, and it's, it's just crazy when you turn on, on, on the news and you see what you see. It's tough. It's tough, especially going to places and being in countries where you see black people, Africans, and it's different. You know, you see them act different. You know, here in Sweden, you see how the Africans here, how they stick together here at one, but at the same time, they mingle. But, you know, they have a, a different sense about them. It's just different. It's just different. And anybody who's been around Africans see that they're about their business. They like to have fun and all this and that, but Africans don't be playing. They're about their business. They like, it's no joke. And success is, you know, their goal. And they help each other. It is crazy. It ain't crazy. It's a good thing. But how they how they stick together here is unbelievable. That's why I said you can't walk up and down the street here. Walk past a black person, one of these Africans, they're going to speak to you. They're going to say hi. They're going to say what's up. And then it's like, you know, you know, how we how we are in the black community. You know what a Chinese store is. You know what a pop is at. That's how it is here. You know, you got African stores everywhere. Hair products, clothes, or what have you, merchandise, they're everywhere. And it's like, boom, this is the African store. Everybody's in there. So we gotta we gotta we gotta fix the situation. And again, that's due to a system that is not trying to oppress African people, you know, which are the minority here, but it's don't get me wrong, there's a lot of them here. So a whole bunch of them. So, you know, when you see it working somewhere else and it's like, damn. These people listen to hip hop. They listen more Afro beats than hip hop, but they still listen to it. It's not really affecting them as much because they're about their business. They understand what it is and they have an alternative to hip hop, which is, you know, Afro beats. And they have, you know, a lot of people listen to um, completely different music in Europe. And don't get me wrong, a lot of people like the American artists, but not as much as you would think. You know, it's not as crazy as it is in America. So. The mindset is not this a completely different mindset. So, you know, we got to we got to look at what we have and what's given to us in the black community and, and figure out is it something that we need? You know, and again, it's so easy to say this stuff. We, we talk all the damn time. That never happens. Same shit over and over. People hear good ideas and they hear things that sounds absolutely perfect. And, you know, we just move on. This is not going to reach every single black person. Everybody is not going to hear this uh, this message. And um, it's not really going to resonate with people because somebody is going to look at it and want to poke holes in the whole thing and see flaws and not really add to 
something that's going to, uh, you know, help us. They just just going to, you know, criticize. But the mindset is there, and we got to change it in order for us to have real change because they're showing us that they're not going to stop. As I said before, it's not going to stop. It's just not. And the only way we can do it is if we just stop following what they're doing and focus on us and start doing things that go against this system and understand, one, you know, we protesting and marching to the same people who are responsible for what we protesting and marching for. So we're dealing with this system. We need to get alternatives, plain and simple. So if it's not black businesses that's springing up to get black people away from these jobs where they're working for the same people who don't give a shit about them, for the same people who are pressing them. If black people don't get these companies and corporations to spring up to where we can take black people away from these corporations who don't help us and bring them to these black corporations that's about helping the black community, it's, it's not going to change. You're preaching to the choir. Nothing is going to change. you preaching and preaching and complaining and marching, and then you're going back to the same people responsible for what you you know, protesting for, you know, and it's crazy. It's a stupid cycle that we're involved in. It's crazy. It's like working against, you know, your best interests. It's like working against, you know, your hopes and dreams, you know, doing this. And it's, it's stupid. It's really stupid. And we really got to get the resources we need to change it. Because if we don't change the system and, you know, stop participating in this system, Nothing is ever going to change. If you don't see that yet, I mean, you got to look forward and look ahead and see the facts. They're not going to stop unless we do something to make it stop, unless we make it stop on our own. Plain and simple. It's never going to stop. You protest, march, whatever, whatever. It ain't going to change. These celebrities are bought off. They paid off to not do nothing. They're not going to help you. Stop looking to these celebrities to do shit and saying what they're doing to help other situations is cool. Oh, that's what's up that he did that. That's what's up that they're doing that. It's bullshit. What they do for the black community, what they do for you. Plain and simple. And the money that they're giving is not going to go to black people. It's not going to go to something that's going to really benefit. They should take their money, put it together, and go find these black people in Houston and make sure they get this money. To make sure they got insurance, because a lot of them don't got insurance, and a lot of them are going to be homeless and are homeless right now. So, you know, this, this is a situation that we got to look at and learn from. If we didn't learn from Katrina, because obviously we didn't. Same situation is going on. Same type of mindset is still here. And, you know, we, we, we got to learn from, from it or, you know, that's it, you know. So I wanted to make this video to kind of piggyback off the last video I talked about, you know, and, you know, get people to really understand what's going on and just, you know, be real about the situation. It's not going to stop unless we stop it. And it, right now, looking at the situation, it seems impossible. But there's little things that we can do personally as individuals to help fix, you know, help rectify the situation. So. So hopefully people, you know, understand and be influenced by uh, people who are really trying to make a change and, you know, help out and join in. So well, I thank you guys for taking the time to watch. Thanks to everybody who um, the 37 people was probably like 40 something now, and I think who actually did support, you know, uh, in America and everybody else around the world who supported and uh, bought the videos or what have you, the downloads, the DVDs. And um, I appreciate the support. Appreciate everybody. Uh, the messages and emails, a lot of them I got to respond to. You know, I got you guys. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys next video. As I said before, to people who stick around to the end of the video, I know they be long sometimes, but I said before, I was going to disappear for a while. You know, now I'm back. A lot of people was asking when the next, next video going to be and where you been. But I said in a couple of videos, DVDs as well, that, you know, I was going to disappear for a while, but it wasn't that long. But um, yeah. Thanks for the support. See you guys next video. Thanks for watching.